Hey, this is Josh for Retool.net, and in this video, I'm going to talk about the new overlay settings in Premiere Pro 7.1. That's the October 2013 release, and hopefully you guys will be getting your hands on that shortly. So let me tell you about this new feature and just show it to you really quickly. So if I come up here into the dropdown in my program monitor, of course, I could do this in the source monitor as well. I'm going to turn on overlays. And you'll notice all of a sudden I have all this information at my hands and let me show you how to customize what that information is. Now you can see I'm seeing some duplicate information here. So for instance I have my time code going on on both of these overlays and obviously that doesn't make a ton of sense. So if I come into my overlay settings which I've already been tweaking and thus the weird layout here and go to settings, you'll notice I can control what each one of these four quadrants is showing. So the one here is set to source time code. And let me just show you the alignment and how that works. You'll notice right now it's set to vertical center. So if I come over here, that is vertical center, of course. But I could also set it to top or bottom alignment. So this is what top would look like. And if I come back to my settings, I'm gonna move that back to vertical center. Now I have the same thing in these quadrants. So instead of going left or right on this top middle one, I can set it within the quadrant as it's shown here. So if I set it to say bottom alignment and hit OK, it's now in the center of the screen, which really doesn't make a lot of sense in this case. So I tend to find that it's best to keep all these in sort of their vertical center alignment on the sides and in the top and bottom, set them to top and bottom. So let me show you what other information you could set them to because source time code in two places obviously doesn't make sense. So I have source time code, markers, sequence clip name, project clip name, and file name. Now this one's already set to file name, which you can see is showing me the file name of the three video files and the one audio file I have laid out in my timeline. And this one is already set to markers, which I'm not over any markers right now, so I'll come back to that. But that'll show me my marker information. I'm gonna set that to all tracks. And then I want to go to this one and show you some of the other information. So again, with it set to top alignment, I'm gonna show you what sequence clip name would do. So if I hit OK, you'll notice that this is set to Mountains and Mountains 2. Because basically what I did was I came over my clip, right clicked and hit rename and changed the clip name in my sequence. So this one, I'm just gonna call it Mountains 3. And you'll notice I have Mountains, Mountains 2 and Mountains 3. Not very descriptive in this case, but it works. Now I can also set it to Project Clip Name. And what that does is if I rename my clip in the project panel before I brought the clip into my timeline, they would have the same name. However, if I brought it into my timeline and then renamed it in the timeline, they'd have different names. So you can actually have two different sets of names between the project panel and the timeline itself. So I could set this one to this is a project name. And if I come on over to my overlay settings, settings and set this from sequence clip name to project clip name you'll notice it says this is a project name and then this one is called cliff because that's what it's called in my project panel so pretty straightforward how to set these up let me just show you what the markers look like if i hit shift m to go to my next marker it's going to snap to the clip marker here and you'll notice it says v2 make a cut here now right now this is a marker comment but it'll also show marker names so if I go into this marker, I can set this to marker name, and this one says make a cut here, and if I hit OK, it says marker name, make a cut here. Obviously, you're probably better off using one of the two instead of both of those fields, because it gets a little confusing to look at. If I go back to my sequence and I hit Shift M again, this is a sequence marker, and it's saying this is my marker name, this is my marker comment, because if you look, I have both of those set up. Now, going back into the overlay settings, I have a few other choices. I have some multi-camera sources here. So you can see, I can see the camera name, source time code, and change the alignment. In this case, I tend to like the bottom alignment, and let me show you what that looks like. If I come on over here to a multi-cam sequence and enable my multi-cam view, you'll see it shows me my camera name, my time code, and it's aligned on the bottom. But I can show either of these two things or none of them, and I can change the alignment to top or middle. 
coming back over here to my regular sequence, let me show you some of the other settings. If I go on over to overlay settings again, you'll notice I can choose whether I want to include 4.3 safe margins. So if I hit OK, and then I turn on my safe markers, you'll notice now I have center cut or 4.3 safety margins. I tend to like to leave those on. I'll shut them off for now. And then if I come back into overlay settings, I also have whether I want to show media limit indicators, edit point indicators, and enable overlay for transmit or during playback. So let me show you what those all mean. I come and turn on media limit and edit point indicators. What that means, if I come on over to an edit point, you'll notice, let me just drag this clip out on its own, you'll notice that this is the start of the cut because I have an edit point indicator. Now it's not the start of the media because there's no indicator here. And let me show you what that would look like. If I come on over to the end of the clip and I ripple it out, and now I go to the end of the media, you'll see that this is a media limit, so it's showing me this marking here, and then the edit point indicator as well, because it's, of course, also an edit point. If I come on back over to overlay settings, enable overlays for transmit just basically means will it play out to my client monitors if I have a third-party broadcast card like a Kona or a Black Magic. So if you enable that, your clients will see the overlays on the third-party monitor just like you will on your computer monitor. Enable during playback means exactly that. Normally these will default to only being on when you're paused, but if I check it and hit OK, I'll now see them while I'm playing back as well. So that's just a preference. I like to keep that off for the most part, but that's up to you. Now the last setting in here is the text size and opacity, and that just lets you customize how big the text is here. So if I change it to 20, I can make it a little bigger. And of course, I can change the opacity of the overlay behind it. I tend to like to keep this at around 75% to keep it a little bit more visible. But if you find that it's blocking too much of your footage, you can come in and make it something like 25%. And then you won't see as much of that overlay. But it can tend to be harder to read. For instance, if I come to this marker comment, it becomes a bit hard to read with only that 25% opacity. Anyway, this is the new overlay settings feature in Premiere Pro 7.1, and I hope you guys enjoyed this new feature and all the information that it puts at your fingertips. Be sure to check out our new product, Color Retooled, which is a set of looks presets for Premiere Pro CC, a ton of easy presets that you can use in Premiere and Speedgrade CC to quickly edit the look of your clips. Everything from brightness and contrast to vintage effects, to things like vignettes that editors can quickly add to their clips and keep working. Also check out Relink Retooled, our conform tool for Premiere and Final Cut that will let you conform to your QuickTime media of different durations and file names than your original media. You can use it with combinations of tape name, file name, and of course you can use partial tape name and file name combined with metadata like timecode and frame rate to help you relink your clips quicker and easier than ever before.